If you're buying a house in winter and you want to know what's up with the garden situation, just go on Google, look at your house, and then you'll see it in like July. And it's a fully pre-designed perennial border for full sun that calf design. <gasps> and that's free. <laughs> Everything is fixable. Gardening is a marathon, not a sprint. Let's kind of move on to a bit of that lawn because um, I've heard some horror stories. Welcome back to the Helpful Gardeners podcast. We hope you're having a pleasant spring so far. Colin, you saw some activity in your garden this week, didn't you? I did. I did. Um, my daylilies are freaking huge. Your daylilies. Yeah, alarmingly big. Like I'm I'm talking like four to six inches. Like, is that making you nervous or anything? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, Plants are a good indicator mm -hmm. uh, of what we can expect. Uh, it has been a very uh, warm and dry winter. Uh, the daylilies were already shooting in February. Oh. So in February, the, those little fresh green, little rounded crowns yep. were coming out of the ground. They kept going. Then we got uh, that old adage, March comes in like a lion and leaves like a pissed off tiger. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so March... I thought, oh, okay, it's going to knock them back a bit. It did not. It mm -hmm. just seemed to water them. And they came uh, rapidly out of the gate. Uh, but the, they're mature. They're established. Uh, they're in a full sun area. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, and they're an extremely hardy perennial. So I'm not too worried. But I've, I've never seen them uh, that size before. Uh, this early in the season. So, like, what do you even do? Do you, do you, you literally just leave them, let them go? And then just like, how is that going to impact them during the gardening season? They might bloom a little earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm certainly not fertilizing them, though okay. I could. Okay. Right? There's active growth. Active growth means I could fertilize. Okay. Uh, I will keep an eye on them. Uh, if it does get really dry, they'll get some supplemental water. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, I'm just leaving them. The they're obviously very happy. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, if they were new, if I just put them in last year or even two years ago, I might be looking at fertilizing. I might be looking at uh, watering right away because the roots might not be as deep as mm -hmm. I want. These are hella established. Let's be honest. Even if I was, what could I do? That's true. You We're know? kind of at the mercy of the weather, right? Yep. And I mean, we've had some really wild weather this winter. We've we've had lots of snow, yep. lots of dry spells. What Last week, we had our first thunderstorm. Hail, rain. It, it dropped. <laughs> uh, the temperature went from 11 degrees to 3 degrees. Roughly, I want to say it was about, and the reason I know this exactly, uh, it was about seven minutes because I left the house uh, and I, I didn't, I knew I had to run an errand. So I didn't uh, put the Jeep in the garage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ran my errands and in the time it took to get to one stall, it was down to three degrees. The hail was coming down. Jimmy didn't even want to be in the backyard. No. It was the kind of weather that, uh, Massive temperature drop, high winds, hail, and thunder. Mm -hmm. We normally see that in June, July, August. Yeah, absolutely. Never now. And it, nope. and it was something. It was almost like like in Calgary, we didn't get totality for the eclipse, but the thunderstorm just took all the attention. It was just yeah. like, we get thunderstorms. This is amazing. <laughs> you know you know what was great, though? What? You know what was great? First thought in my mind, uh, maybe not the first one, but it was uh, one of the first, <laughs> was like, Holy crow, this is amazing. I don't even have to put a frost blanket out. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, hit whatever you want. I wasn't worried about the hail. Because normally, Jenny's called me at work before. Yeah. And she's been like, did you see there's a hail warning? What do I do with the plants? And we've got our frost blankets stacked in the garage. Mm -hmm. We get them out, put them on the tomato cages. There have been times when neither of us have been home. And yep. you're like, well, let's what just see what we get home to. Mm -hmm. This time, just, just got to enjoy it. You know what? Well, I didn't get to enjoy it. Because Why? I was in the South and my, like my mom lives up near here and she was reporting and she was showing me pictures and all of the little ice pellets yeah, that was yeah. forming in the South. We had sun and then we had like maybe five minutes of like flurry activity. And it was later on in the evening and that was it. We didn't get anything oh, like, like, but, but it's so, it's weird, right? Because we're in the same city and yet from the North end to the South end, it's like a completely different climate. Okay. Just, just so we're clear though. You're not complaining that you didn't get garbage weather, right? Are you are you bragging here? Yeah, like I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like mixed feelings about it because it's like everybody else got a thunderstorm and we didn't get a thunderstorm. 
<laughs> you got like some serious FOMO going on yes! with bad weather. I had to call my friend in the Northwest and be like, tell me everything. Yeah. Can you FaceTime the thunderstorm? <laughs> yeah. Can I watch with you, please? This was more exciting to me than the eclipse, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, all cities, they're, they're pretty big and, and you get random weather patterns, but I've never seen a city like Calgary. I, I remember a few years ago, uh, I'm sure we could Google it and find out, but there was something bizarre. Like at the same time uh, in the morning, it was like minus 12 in Tuscany and like plus six over at Cornerstone. Yeah. And it, it it's what, a 15 minute drive? Yeah, it between is. Between those two? It is. And that's how much the temperature, snow. Yeah. Some people are like, how many times have uh, we heard of frost warning and it hasn't hit me because I'm in a city? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's very bizarre how well, it works in Calgary. This is why gardening is so exciting, yep. right? Because you don't know what you're going to get. You kind of have to prepare for everything. And that's why gardeners talk about weather all the time, because it'll be different everywhere you go. Yep. And this is actually all very relevant to this week's episode because I bought a house. Congratulations. I am so happy I, for you guys. Brad and I are so excited. We've been working for this for so long. And, you know, when for anybody who's just, you know, watched the podcast since the very beginning, I had a small space garden. We'll still have for a little while. Um, townhouse. Are you had bringing a, your flamingo? Yeah. Okay. I, just I have wanted, two now. I just wanted to check. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's how I how measure else, snow. Exactly. How else are we going to know? How else am I okay. going to know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we had a small space garden, townhouse, cement pad, Brad had made these gorgeous raised planters yeah. and that's how we did things for years. Um, and I got very creative and, and now we're kind of ready for something a little bit bigger, a new challenge, new things to grow. And so we bought this new space and, and I'm very excited, but I know that there's probably some people like me who they don't know where to start. You know, you, you, you have this new space, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what you have. You don't know what you can put in. You, you, you also don't want to overwhelm yourself and, and get that burnout super early in the season. Yep. So, and where do you even think we should start? Start with your house, not your garden. Start inside. Yes. Inside? Yep. So you're going to spend more time in your house than your garden. Oh, yeah. Okay? True. True. Gardening is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, uh, you know, new adventure you and Brad have of having your own house. Uh, suddenly you, you know, like, well, I don't like the bathroom and I'm not happy with the garden and what, so you're going to spend more time in the house. Mm -hmm. It's just a guarantee that's everybody I know spends more time in the home, especially in a winter climate, especially in a Northern climate like yeah. Calgary. So make your living space, your bastion. And you, you can do that with houseplants too. Yeah. Oh yes. <gasps> Cause you're going to be looking at the rooms and you're going to be like, oh, this room gets a lot of light. Oh, Brad, can we put some? grow lights here. Uh, I, I want a, I want a, a, a herb uh, pit on my kitchen counter. Yeah. Okay. So you can still work with plants while you do that. I've seen it. I, we had one client. It was great. Crazy, uh, crazy German fella named Gunther. Um, and he was hilarious. And he bought a new house and at the, and he wasn't doing it himself. Obviously he hired us, but he gutted the entire house uh, was doing the roof and the driveway and the garden all at the same time. Everything. Everything. That sounds very overwhelming. Because his thought was, well, if he did it all now, then it would all just be done in one season. And after a couple of months, uh, he came out and he was like, and he was joking, it just said, I think my wife's going to divorce me. Oh, and he had no. like a thick German accent. <laughs> I think my wife is going... <laughs> And he was like, she can't take it anymore. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, Gunther, I'm not surprised, man. I'm not surprised. You've got backhoes going. You've got crews arguing with each other. Yeah. Like, this is, I know you're not doing the work, but yep. you are essentially living in a full construction site for an entire summer. Wow. That, yeah. That's a lot to have to consider. So break it down. Pace yourself. Yep. Yeah. Pace okay. yourself. Make your house your bastion. Get that set up to where you're like, I don't even have to think about my house. It's my comfort zone. I'm happy yeah. here. Then you can go full bar on the guard. Yeah, wasn't it? What Somebody told me once, they were like, you know, when you get into your house, just sit with it for like a couple weeks. Yep. And then you can figure out what's practical, what kind of furniture you want, if 100%. what's comfortable. Yep. So maybe it's the same with the garden. Just leave it for a season. Just kind of assess what you have and then go from there. And I, and I really want to start off 
kind of do like a little bit of a of a, of a tour of my place and kind okay. of touch base with all of the little areas that you can consider. So starting from the front, uh, we have a north facing front nice. and a south facing backyard, which is like the dream best. for a yep. gardener, the right? <laughs> So in the front, I've noticed it's it's a newer build, so it's it's got like a front garage home, so it's a lot of cement on the front, but you have this cute little patch of a, of a tree and then a little bit of um like like something growing kind of at the base of the tree, and okay. that's it on a little patch of lawn. So it's this like little small space garden, yep. which is cool because Absolutely. I have the experience of small space garden, so I can kind of bring that experience with me. But it's winter; I don't know what's in there. One tip, though, that I found because I kind of creeped our house on Google and I was like, well, what does it look like? I, I'm, I'm antsy. I want to just get in there. Right. And you can. So if you're buying a house in winter and you want to know what's up with the garden situation, just go on Google, look at your house and then you'll see it in like July. Because it gives you the timeline. Of- oh, my gosh. Right. Oh, that is cool. It's such a hack. And I actually found out. So the tree in our front yard is deciduous, which is great because yeah. it puts it in one of those two categories. And then we found out that there is something that will grow at the base of that tree. We just have to wait and find out what it is. So it kind of do you have any fun. idea uh, what kind of deciduous tree? It's like, it looks like burgundy. Oh, you know, you haven't moved in yet. No. Um, Although I go on Friday, so I'll send you a picture and we'll take find a out. Picture. Um, Tune in next week. Yeah. No. So when you looked at uh, Google Maps and you looked at what was growing out of the yeah. base, was it identifiable as perennials or annuals? It was or? green. It was green. Okay. And the, the leaves of the tree were burgundy? Yeah. Okay. Only reason I'm asking is I've seen this happen is maybe somebody messed the tree up and it's a huge amount of sucker growth coming out the bottom. So. Oh, there's a consideration. Yeah. Okay. But there, I, I cannot imagine there is anything happening on your property that I haven't seen before. And I promise you right now, uh, my housewarming gift <laughs> to you is going to be a full garden consult and design. Yes. I will get you guys there. So if I say something like, oh, that could just be really aggressive sucker growth. I don't want any part at all ever. <laughs> I don't want your excitement or your feelings to diminish. I want you to be like, all right, sucker growth. That's a challenge. Bring it. Challenge accepted. Exactly. Hashtag. Got it. Exactly. So I, if I say something, I don't want you ever to be like, oh, no. <laughs> Everything is fixable, Colin. Exactly. Everything. How much grass is there? You said a little grass patch. Are we talking like? Like the size of this table? Oh, you know what? That's awesome. You can rip it all out and put in like sedum curve. <gasps> oh, I love that. Oh, Ooh, okay. So kind of assessing your lifestyle then you can change out some of the elements that are already there yeah. to fit your lifestyle. Do you really want to pull the lawnmower out to cut that tiny spot to put it away and then you've dragged grass clippings all over the yeah. place? Just make your front low maintenance. Yeah. Make your front no maintenance. It looks and mm-hmm. looks beautiful. Yep. Always has nice curb appeal. A couple of hanging baskets in the yeah. summer. Winter arrangements. Mm-hmm. Bam, front is done. Next. Exactly. And, and the front entryway, if it's a north facing or a little bit of a shadier spot, just throw in some like shady annuals. Yeah, like, exactly. Like um, coleus. Yeah. Ooh. Begonias. Begonias. Give you that bright color. Yeah. And you can get the trailing begonias so you can yeah. do hanging baskets. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing how even though you have a big space, you can have small spaces in that big space? I love that you bring that up because uh, when you look at a garden, it doesn't matter about the size. I've done gardens smaller than our studio and I've done 14 acre estates. Yeah. Okay. And I've done everything in between and they can all have. So the, the, the tiny little one we did, um, obviously it couldn't have uh, a whole bunch of stuff, but right at the front door, uh, but the client, uh, wanted fragrance. So when she left, um, in the mornings, uh, or came back in the evenings from work, she would get that fragrant smell. It was one of those beautiful old uh, townhouses, row houses in Montreal. Mm-hmm. Very small area. Uh, she wanted an area for birds. Aww. So we did a low-growing plant so cats can't hide. Uh, and we did a bird bath. Uh, and she had that. And then she wanted uh, some proper delineation from her neighbors. Uh, so we did some Japanese maples and some larger perennials that would grow under it. Mm. And it was beautiful but there were three distinct areas of a tiny garden that tied into each other and mm-hmm. there was fragrant birds and delineation yeah yeah so yeah that's so cool i love it i love that idea of thinking of your garden as cohesive but also separate like exactly like we were even talking about last year like those themed gardens like, like moon <laughs> garden i'm sorry are you gonna do a hate garden i mean 
Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, but I have get to get to know wait. your neighbors first. See which one gets there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My name's Brandy. Don't, like we may any or may of not your neighbors are going to hate no, you. No, we'll be friends, I <laughs> yeah. swear. Um, okay, so moving on to the sides of the house because things are very different from older establishments than right. newer ones, right? A lot less space in between houses True. on, the, on yep. the newer establishments. And so what I've noticed is that you're going to have um, not a lot of sunlight in between your house. And so instead of doing like grass or anything, like I see a lot of people doing like gravel. Yep. It's low maintenance and it's an easy walking path to yep. and from the back front to the, to the back front. Go- <laughs> <laughs> I knew what Going- you were Thank you. You. Yep. you know, back, backyard to the front yard. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. You won't get weeds, I'm assuming. If you maybe. do, they're easy to pull. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, so they've got to go through the fabric and the gravel and whatnot. So weeds are very... And I don't endorse this, you know that, but just to bring it up, because fair's fair, we have yep. to consider everything. If you do get weeds growing there, well, you can even weed treat them because there's nothing else to kill because it's growing in rock. Oh, duh. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it even easier. Yeah. 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 You were mentioning before the show about um, pathways that you can use rock, manipulate rock, yeah. And then create really artistic pieces in your yard. So yeah. what can you use? Like, what do you recommend? So one of my favorite looks, if you've got that. So I'm guessing uh, if it's in Calgary, this is just a, a gross assumption. Is it that dark uh, crush rundle? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so I love what that I you would... know that. <laughs> I, lo- I, I eyeball gardens all the time. I see what's <laughs> used. Um, look for that really uh, light gray almost tan colored uh, flagstone Okay. Uh, and put down a flagstone path. So you pull back, you, you rake back, uh, scrape back the rundle, you put your flagstone in and then you push the rundle back around it. Mm-hmm. And now you actually have stepping stones through the rundle. Then you can scrape out spots, take an exacto, cut a chunk out of the fabric, dig out the soil, amend it and put in creeping thyme or uh, a juga or a uh, lily of the valley. Now you've got low growers mm-hmm. that if you step on them, they'll be fine. Yeah. Um, the gravel and the fabric um, uh, help with drainage so they're not sitting there rotting. Uh, and now you've got this small area, this pathway, but this pathway with little expenditure and little effort has now suddenly turned into something more aesthetic. It's absolutely. It's so creative and it's practical, functional. Yep. I love it. Another another thing you can do, and I'm just throwing this out there. I don't even know why I would say this, is one of them could be turned into like a dog run. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, you don't have to do that part. Or- <laughs> this is my plan. I told you in secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just saying you could. I, I, I don't advocate for it at all. We'll see. I mean, dog run sounds like a really fun idea and especially great use of space on that other side of the house. Yep. Brad wants chickens, though. <laughs> You know what? Maybe. Yeah. But chickens, yeah. chickens are good to actually let out into your yard uh, because chickens will actually go and peck bugs. Remember what Myrna was saying yeah. about them? Yeah. They'll go and pick bugs off your plants. That's right. Yeah. So <gasps> you don't want to have a chicken run. You want the chickens running around your backyard, except you also want to make sure if there are any bobcats or feral cats or hawks in the area, because you might not be getting chickens. You might just be serving food mm-hmm. to the local wildlife. That is such a good point to bring up is yeah. assessing what's going on outside your garden. It's all assessment. So yep. like bugs, um, what other diseases might be around? Like if if you have, if you're seeing like a cotoneaster and it's looking pretty shady and then you might have to do some preventative measures yep. or like you just mentioned, any predators. We live, we're going to be living right next to Fish Creek Park. So I can only imagine what kinds of critters, birds, voles. Oh, voles. Yeah, yeah that's right. Oh. Yeah. So that's that's better to take it easy mm-hmm. and start small and build on small successes. Yeah. Because you say 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 you you can't contain your excitement, which I get. Mm-hmm. And you go, no, Brad, we have to do the garden this year. We'll do the house <laughs> in the winter. And you do everything, and then suddenly you realize. Uh, that you do have backyard pests and mm-hmm. you do have bugs uh, and the voles are in and they're eating everything and there's slugs and I, and the list goes on and on. Suddenly you're disheartened. Yeah. If you're starting with lawn, first thing I've done on every property, um, I, I, I've talked about it numerous times, that property we moved in where the garden was dead. Yes. And it took me a year. It, Harry and Jenny were like, oh, we're not planting anything this year. And I was like, there's a couple of nice pots. There's too that. much to do to yeah. sort of get it back to a, a exactly. decent space. Yeah. I have to save it first, 
then mm -hmm. next year we'll get there. And that's exactly what we did. It's, mm -hmm. Everything is doable. Okay. So let's kind of move on to a bit of that lawn because um, I've heard some horror stories <laughs> of folks moving in. And, and it's so funny, like, this is sort of the the most popular time to move house, is what I've been told. Oh, really? Yes. Um, uh, uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Though. What? Uh, when exactly are you oh, taking no. uh, possession oh, of the no. house? I think that needs to be brought up. Like after the May long weekend? Mm. <laughs> like right, mm. right around that area, which I know when you work in a garden center <laughs> is like the worst thing you could do because... It's stressful to move house, but yes. it's also very busy at the garden center. Yes. This is like the time. This is like our Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, is there anything you want to add? Make it like three out of three? Like, <laughs> you're going to pour sugar in your gas tank too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even wish that on yeah. me. Where is some wood that isn't <laughs> fake wood? There we go. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Key. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Key. Key. Thanks, but, Dad. Uh, I, I, when you told me that, I was just like, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> You're like, how's the house going? You're like, I'm sleeping on a sleeping bag in the living room. <laughs> I know, I know. But, um, you know, what if you move into a house and you have lawn? Because most most homes seem to have like yep. a bit of lawn to begin with, at least. And what if you like find just a whole bunch of dog doo doo or like or it's very lumpy or you have some dead spots that you're not sure if it's like dog urine or if it's something more nefarious. So. How do you even tackle a lawn? First thing, like anything, clean it up. Okay. Okay. So get out and uh, pick up the dog waste. It's compostable. Mm -hmm. uh, the the city of Calgary, uh, their uh, composter absolutely does it. So you put it uh, by uh, the compost bags, uh, put them in that, drop them in your green bin. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then rake it. And with a new lawn, this year I'm saying don't do a hard defatch in the spring. Okay. Uh, we may need that um, that thatch to act as a, uh, a, a insulation blanket if we are going to get a drought. Uh, it regulates the soil temperature, keeps moisture in, blah, blah, blah. Normally, we remove it to allow better airflow and allow the fertilizer and whatnot to get right to the roots. This year, we're looking at it from a different angle. But for you, that thatch is gone. Nice. Yeah, okay. I would dethatch it, get rid of debris. Then I would just sit back and wait, sit back and watch the grass grow. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. So just waiting to see kind of what problems might pop up yep. and then you can easily take care exactly. of them. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you've, you've got some dead spots. Okay. Is it winter kill? Uh, is it a dog pee spot or is it chinch bug? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, right. Oh gosh. That so was... if it's, if it's the first two, it won't spread. Right. If it's the last one, you're going to have one dead spot and then another dead spot. So that's what you want to keep an eye out for. Okay. Walk around. I, mm -hmm. We never inspect our lawns properly. I, I, at least I don't. And the vast majority of people I talk to um, about lawns, they really don't. They're like, well, I look at it. It looks pretty green. Go out and walk on it. And when you're walking, don't just walk. Stop and see if any ants run over your feet. Oh, gosh. That's such a good yep. point. Because, I mean, what if you're just hanging out one day and then you see like you're on top of an ant hill? Yep. Or even worse, and I've done this before, you're like, I'm going to cut a new bed. And you, so one time, absolute true story. Oh my God. It's the only time I've ever really been bitten by ants because ants here don't bite, but I, and I don't blame them. I like, I'm fully on their side. So I was digging out an old tree stump. It was totally rotted. It was gross. Don't tell Myrna. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I had to remove this old tree stump. So I had my shovels and whatnot. And it's there was nothing around it. I didn't have to worry about any perennials. I was just ripping it out. And I reached down to get my shovel. So I dig and I loosen up all the roots. And then you rock it backwards and forwards to see where it's holding. And then you go and cut those roots. Uh -huh. So I'd done that. And I reached down to get my shovel. And no word of a lie, my shovel handle was black and moving. <gasps> the tree was rotted but it was all carpenter ants, I guess. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a bug expert in any stretch of the imagination. And they had a massive nest, and I just dug right through the heart of their <gasps> nest and ripped it out. My skin is crawling. My what skin did you was do? Uh, I got bit, so I got up, and they were all over my... Thank God I was wearing shorts. Yeah. They were over my legs. They'd gotten down into my work boots and everything. Thank God there was water nearby and I just ran into the water. Yeah. I just ran into the water. Yeah, and that's it, all you can do. It was, I went back and looked and it, it, 
the bites hurt a little bit. They were a little itchy, but uh, yeah, they're not fire ants or bullet ants or anything. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really that bad. And I went back and I looked and I was like, oh my God. And they're, they're all carrying the eggs and they're scurrying. And I, I felt bad. Yeah. I felt bad. They've got this home that they've built. They're, they're not disturbing anybody. The rest of the garden was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, okay. And I give the tree a couple of good chunks, ripped it out. And then I left it there. And I think it stayed there for a week until I went back and the ants had all. Oh, okay. So again. they went out to go find yep. a new home. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna get rid of it and throw it away and disrupt them. They, they have an important part. They're part of the yeah. uh, ecosystem. We. I, I'm not gonna be so arrogant to be like I don't like ants. Yeah. Right. I, so plus, I, ants bring birds to the yard. Exactly. Like <laughs> ants. Uh, ants aerate the soil. Mm-hmm. Okay. The ants will tell you if you have aphids. Have you ever seen ants harvest aphids? Okay, no. We are totally off piss here, but I gotta finish. This. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have to tell me because okay. I've never heard of this before. You remember uh, the cartoon? The, the two cartoons came out at the same time. Uh, I know. Now I'm on cartoons. You're like, what the hell? I, I will get to the point. I swear. I swear. Uh, there was uh, a bug's life and ants. Yeah. Okay. So in ants, uh, the two main characters, the the nerdy guy and the jock guy, whatever uh, the names were. Uh, so one was Sylvester Stallone, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And they go to a bar. And they order a drink and the guy slides them a drink. Well, that drink is a little green bug. Yeah. That's okay? no, that's, that's not an aphid. And what they <gasps> drink out of it is the sugar. So aphids uh, pierce the plant and they pull the sugar out. Ants yeah. can't do that. Okay. So the ant wants the sugar because ants are attracted to sugar. And if you watch, and I guarantee there's videos on this, you can watch it. You will see ants actually harvesting. So there'll be uh, four, five, 10 ants, whatever surrounding aphids while the aphids are working and other ants will be crawling up the stem and lifting the sugar off them and taking it back down to the nest. <gasps> and they actually uh, herd and uh, harvest uh, o- almost like animal husbandry with aphids. That's wild. So you see ants marching in a perfect line, carrying things on your plants. It can be a fantastic indicator you have aphids because the ant isn't hurting your plant. Yeah. The ant is pointing out that you have a problem. So basically, you just got a new watch party. Yeah. 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 That's so a, that's a pretty and, good reason to keep ants. And nobody, nobody knew that in, in that cartoon. And uh, most people I spoke to, nobody picked it up. They just thought it was like a, a weird bug thing. Yeah. Now I got to watch the movie again. Yeah. Like things you miss when you first see the yeah. movie, right? That's really cool. So yeah, that's uh, uh, that's why I have respect for ants, but we can actually get back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we talked about the lawn. Yeah. So that's a really good start. Um, you were talking about... Um, like, you know, assessing what you already have in your yard and, and, and talking about trees. So we have some trees in the back. We have these beautiful Swedish column Okay. Um, nice. and it provides that privacy that you're talking about, but I can't help, but keep your story in the back of my mind. You know, when you moved into that house and then you had that tree problem, birch leaf minor, birch leaf minor. Yep. So when you do have, when you are so settling into a new garden and you're not quite sure how your trees and shrubs are doing, how should you approach them? you got a couple of options. Uh, one that I'll always recommend is get a hold of a local arborist. Oh, just okay. for like an yep. assessment kind exactly. of thing? Exactly. That's cool. I yeah. didn't know you could do that. Oh, yeah. Get them to come out and uh, assess the health. Most uh, a, a good arborist, like our friend John. Yeah. Okay, John would be able to walk around your property at this time of year, tell you every single tree you have, probably the exact species of it, uh, and tell you the health of it. Okay, which by the way, if you are in the Calgary area, Jean is from Let It Grow Tree Services. He's fantastic. Highly yeah. recommend. Um, but that's amazing. So they can basically go around, give you at least an idea on what you're working with. And then if you do need to tackle yeah. something. Or- and they can tell you, they can also, a good arborist will be able to look and and can tell you right away and be like, that's an amazing tree. But in five years, that can become a major problem for you. Oh, yeah. It's leaning towards your house or it's got a split at the top. Wow. You may need to look at having that trimmed mm-hmm. or taken down. Yeah. Now, they're not going to gouge you, if again, if they're good. They're going to come, going to give you an honest assessment and leave. Great thing about uh, your aspens, ridiculously hardy. That's why so many people put them in. So yeah. I wouldn't be too worried. Okay, that's good. Also, yeah. you know, while we're on the same wavelength of trees, something that I never thought about until my mom's garden became an issue for us was um, if you have fruit trees, which I know Myrna last week was saying fruit trees are really excellent for if you want to get birds into your yep. yard, right? So that's that's there's definitely a benefit to fruit trees. But if your lifestyle is not up for 
harvesting, then maybe don't have a fruit tree or maybe have a fruit tree that, you know, is smaller or doesn't, you know, like, cause my mom has crab apple trees and it is such a task every single year to do it. It's amazing. The product is incredible and we use them, Yep. but that's a lot of time and responsibility. You know, I, that's what I think people forget. I mean, I forget every year with my tomatoes. (laughs) I absolutely do. But tomatoes are very easy to gather. Yeah. Uh, they're fun, and uh, you make a lot of good friends by giving away lots of tomatoes. Yes. People always like them. You plant an apple tree. When that hits maturity, I hope you enjoy eating three pounds of apple a day. Yeah, or have lots of friends. Yep. Now, there are people who freeze it and do meal pep and stuff like that. But again, what you're saying, like, you and Brad have just just bought a house. Um, you got to uh, make sure that's going good. Uh, you both work full time. You're yes. both, like, hard workers. Um, you're going to get a dog, possibly, maybe, because there's a dog run. Uh, <laughs> we're not, we're not I'm just saying, I'm just saying, what ifs? I'm, I'm, I'm supposing here. Um, is going out and harvesting and meal prepping a bunch of apples really the direction you want to go? Well, maybe at some point, yep. but maybe not right now. And that's okay too, right? Exactly. So that's something to yep. consider as well. Looking into sort of the other structures that we have existing in the garden, you know, looking at, say you have spaces for pots and annuals and sort of taking, taking inventory of what's around. Like, like I think you said earlier, um, if you have irrigation systems, understanding how they work, um, making sure that they're maintenance properly, I'm sure much like the arborist, you can probably get a professional in to check out your irrigation systems. See where your outdoor faucets are. Yes. How much hose you need. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Because you you probably didn't even have a hose. You probably did everything with watering can. I don't even know. Yeah. I didn't look for a hose. Exactly. I'd I was, be the first thing I would do is eyeball where it <laughs> Where's is. Where's the hose? Yeah. Because sometimes you're at the side of the house, mm-hmm. which means you'll have to put a splitter and run a hose to the front and a hose to the back, yeah. or you're going to be out there all the time with a watering right. can. Uh, what's your um, perimeter barrier? Is it a is it a wood fence? Is it yeah. chain? It's a wood fence? Yeah, it's a wood fence. Wicked. So you've basically now got a uh, built-in trellis. Oh, ooh, getting creative with your yeah. space. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, like uh, on every fence post, you can put one of those hooks and now mm-hmm. you've got hanging baskets that'll mm-hmm. bring the birds in <gasps> and bring in the pollinators. Yep. And then you put them uh, on the uh, fence uh, right above your vegetable garden. And then if your vegetable garden is facing south and west, um, put all of your peas and beans mm-hmm. and now you've got runners for them to go up. Oh, that's so that's so smart. Yep. And that's something that we can do this year while we're waiting to assess Absolutely. the rest of the garden. So finding temporary um, fixes, which also I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this because um, I was talking to my friend Victoria about this very episode because I was very excited about it. And she's a renter. <laughs> okay, yeah. And so she's always looking for ways to temporarily improve her garden setting. Um, you know, you know, you just want to do anything too permanent, no perennials, no trees and shrubs, but, you know, creating raised planters out of say, like, um, what are those wood pallets? You know, yep. you can get creative and you can make these temporary pieces or you can hang hanging baskets. Oh, buy something. Uh, if you really want, get something like a veggie pod. Yeah. Oh, so when you true. leave, you take it with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Your yep. hanging baskets. When you leave, you take them with you. If you want perennials, if you've got like a little bed, it's already cut and it just kind of fills with weeds every year because you're like, well, I don't want to weed it and there's no perennials and I don't want to buy perennials. I get that. Yeah. Maybe you and Brad go and things start popping up. Yeah. Uh, and a perennial pops up, I don't know, a still be. Uh, and you're like, I don't like that mm-hmm. at all. I want to get rid of it. And she's like, well, I'm around her. I don't care. I'll put it in. That helps keep the weeds down. Yep. Okay. You're going to divide. People can take that. So there's a cheap way to put perennials in. Uh, and then it, say she rents for that same property two or three years, she can divide mm-hmm. the perennial again. Oh, that's such a good idea. And actually, I'm so glad that you brought up dividing perennials because here's a really neat idea and something that my mom and I have been talking about. Um, Growing up, her garden was always this incredible thing in my mind. It was like, this is something I aspire to have one day for myself. And she has a bunch of perennials. And I'm thinking, you know, of of, of carrying on that sort of legacy of her garden in my own garden. Once we have established things a little bit more, we can sort of look to see where we can include some of those perennials and maybe bring some over. You don't have to wait until you're established to steal perennials. <laughs> Experience, Colin? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, okay, so just say mm-hmm. uh, you're not ready. Uh, 
you know, knowing you, uh, I think you're going to want uh, your color, your annuals, and some some brightness up first, and then you're probably going to want some veggies. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So perennials are probably on the list, as you just said, but they might be third or fourth priority, mm-hmm. right? You might want to do uh, your little pathway and dog run, uh, and then your <laughs> veggie garden and your annuals, and then you're going to get to the perennials. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe by that time, your mom is looking at selling the house. That's okay? right. So there's a ton of moving parts, and you're like, oh, I'm not ready, but I would love to have some of my mom's perennials. Yeah. All right, well, then we go, we dig them, we split them, we go back to your place with them, and we do a process of what's called healing in. Okay. okay? So we just dig a trench somewhere, anywhere, it doesn't matter, and we just put the perennials in, boom, 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 boom. No design, no layout, no nothing. Mm-hmm. We push the soil back over, so we make sure it's good soil. We push the soil back over and we plant them properly. You water them. And then when you do have your perennial, we lift them out and we put them in properly. Then we also know what we're starting with. So when we design your perennial bed, we make sure that they're featured. That's so nice. I'm yeah. so happy I can have that the, like both worlds, you yeah, know? Absolutely. I, like I said, there's not, I can't imagine a garden problem you're going to come up with that I'm going to be like, no, no, no. <laughs> so I will absolutely, I, I used to dig perennials out of other people's gardens and plant mm-hmm. them in other people's flower beds. I'm That's pretty right. sure I can get them from your mom's to yours. <laughs> Call in the gorilla gardener, right? <laughs> Honestly, I'm feeling very optimistic and I hope that a lot of our listeners and viewers will also feel optimistic because I was definitely coming into it feeling a little bit overwhelmed because you want to do a good job and you're also really excited and you almost want to do too much at once, right? But you said at the beginning, okay, Brian, and I love that you said that there isn't anything that isn't fixable. Yes. I've seen seen gardens graded wrong Mm -hmm. and all the water's running to the house. Uh, We've dug dry wells. We've regraded. Use resources. so. There's books here. Some of them are old, okay? Mm -hmm. But you know what? The principle hasn't changed. It's garden design. They're listing perennials. So there are a ton of resources. And don't forget, the city of Calgary has the Yard Smart program, Mm -hmm. okay? And they've worked with uh, the Heart Society, with us, with Green Calgary, uh, and with a lot of the other independent garden centers. We have people listening from Ontario, from Calgary, uh, from the States, from England. Go hit up the independent garden centers. Yeah. That's where you're going to find the the nerds like us, okay? <laughs> the passionate ones. Talk to your municipality because I got to give Calgary credit for being so forward thinking with the Yard Smart program. Yeah, I, even even we have a compost program that's starting yep. up soon as well. And they're literally giving you free compost yep. for your garden. Yeah, and that comes from the green bins that we're creating. So yes. that city of Calgary are doing some pretty great things, but... Uh, there's a resource there. So there, um, our friend Kath from the Heart Society, yeah. uh, they actually have, um, can't remember, if you go to yardsmart.ca, uh, city of Calgary, yardsmart.ca, uh, you'll see it. And it's a fully pre-designed perennial border for full sun that Kath designed. <gasps> and that's free. Free. Free, free resource. Go ahead and use it. And Chop you know, it up, oh. take it apart. You go, oh, I don't have all of that room. Pick the perennials you do like. Kath has laid it out. So the big ones are at the back. The small ones are at the front. So you can chop and choose. You might not even want to copy that design, but now you've got a list of 20, 25 perennials that you can leave with that you know are full sun, suitable for Calgary, and drought tolerant. The resources are out there. Sure, we've got Google. I like to go old school. I love to look at my books. I find them, I don't know, more inspiring. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's because I'm at the age I am or, or it just appeals to me. Um, love the Yard Smart program, mm-hmm. but... It, Talk to your friends. Talk to your neighbors. Yeah. If if you have good neighbors, if you're friendly with your neighbors, uh, and you notice that they're gardening quite well, ask them. Hey, what have you seen in this area? Is there a lot of bobcats? Are you having any problems with voles? Yeah, what are you growing? Yeah, exactly. I love and that. If you're like, what are you growing? They're like, oh, we always grow tomatoes. You go, okay, well, why don't we grow peppers and we can trade? I'm so excited for you and Brad, and I'm really excited that I'm going to help you guys navigate the garden. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from this podcast alone, and so I'm excited to get into this new experience and to try a different type of gardening, right? Absolutely. (laughs) And uh, yeah, we'll get you there no matter. It's always fixable. It's always fixable. Yeah. Well, that wraps us up for this week. Wherever you're watching or listening from, we thank you for visiting us, Garden Nerds. You can help support this planty place by leaving us a review wherever you stream your favorite podcasts, including YouTube. We'd really appreciate it. If you're listening on Spotify, make sure to give us your perspective on our polls and question of the week. Personally, Colin, I think the question of the week is, have you mowed a lawn? And we're going to see if I'm not alone. 
You are totally alone. I'm, I'm, I know there's someone out there. I know I'm resonating I, with someone. I know. <laughs> I know. You can also send us an email, info at goldenacre.ca. We had somebody, um, Elise from, uh, or Alyssa from last week. Yep. She sent us an email. We love seeing your emails. Um, just put podcast somewhere in the, po- uh, the subject line just so that we see it. Next week, we're diving into a whole bunch more spring content. So we hope to see you then. Okay. Bye, everyone.